We are drowning in information and misinformation. That's why I created the Flutter Toolkit to help us think critically through claims and make more informed decisions. Flutter stands for falsifiability, logic, objectivity, alternative explanations, tentative conclusions, evidence, and replicability. These seven rules, based in critical thinking and scientific reasoning, provide a structured and systematic method for evaluating claims. Get these seven rules under your belt and you'll be well on your way to staying afloat in a sea of misinformation. The first rule is falsifiability. It might seem counterintuitive, but the first step in determining if a claim is true is to figure out if you can prove it wrong. Falsifiability is a crucial concept in science. It means that there should be a way to use evidence to potentially disprove it. Falsifiable claims are objective, which means that they're true for everyone and don't depend on our personal beliefs. Unfalsifiable claims can't be disproven. They could be true, but because there's no way to use evidence to test them, any evidence that appears to support them is basically useless. There are four types of unfalsifiable claims. Subjective claims are personal preferences, opinions, values, ethics, morals, and feelings. For example, cats make the best pets. I'm objectively right about this. I can provide evidence for my claim. Cats are quiet, mostly. They're self-cleaning. I don't have to take them outside to go to the bathroom. But no matter how much evidence I have to support my claim, it's an opinion. And so it's not evidence-based. The thing is, we tend to hold subjective beliefs tightly, as they often mean a great deal to us. And subjective claims are often the source of a lot of disagreement. But this is actually due to the fact that they can't ever be falsified. So there's no way of determining if they're true. Supernatural claims invoke entities like gods and spirits, vague energies and forces, and even magical human abilities like psychic powers. But by definition, the supernatural is above and beyond what's natural and observable, and therefore isn't falsifiable. It doesn't mean that these claims are false or true, but that there's no way to collect evidence to test them. For example, so-called energy medicine, like Reiki, is based on the claim that illnesses are caused by out-of-balance energy fields that can be adjusted to restore health. But unlike other forms of energy, these energy fields have never been observed. How do we know where someone's energy fields are, or if they've been blocked, or if they've been adjusted? Vague claims are undefined or unclear. For example, today's horoscope says, Today is a good day to dream. Avoid making any important decisions. The energy of the day might bring new people into your life. This horoscope uses ambiguous and vague terms, like dream, important, and might. And so it doesn't make any specific measurable predictions. But because it's open to interpretation, you could convince yourself that it matches what happened to you during the day, especially if you spent the day searching for evidence. That's the thing about vague claims. The power of vague claims is that they're so vague, they allow room for us to interpret them as we desire. Be sure to evaluate a claim as it is, not as we want it to be. And finally, ad hoc excuses. When we really want a falsifiable claim to be true, but the evidence suggests that it's not true, we find ways to protect it. We rationalize, make excuses, and move the goalposts, essentially making the claim unfalsifiable. Conspiracy theorists are masters at protecting their beliefs from falsification. Missing evidence is covered up. Evidence that would disprove the conspiracy was planted. The conspiracy theory becomes immune to evidence. Ad hoc excuses are essentially violating the rule of objectivity. We're not being honest with ourselves. The rule of falsifiability essentially reminds us that evidence matters. And don't assume that a claim is true because it can't be proven false. The rule of logic. Arguments for a claim must be logical and not commit logical fallacies. An argument consists of a conclusion or a claim and one or more premises that provide evidence, reasons, or support for the claim. A lot of arguments also contain hidden premises, which are unstated assumptions that are required for the conclusion to be true. And so we must identify them when we're evaluating arguments. 
Logical fallacies are flaws in reasoning that weaken or invalidate an argument. There are about a gazillion logical fallacies, but some of them are more common than others. For example, the ad hominem attempts to discredit an argument by attacking the source. The appeal to authority claims something is true based on the position of an assumed authority. The appeal to emotions attempts to persuade with emotions like anger, fear, or pity in place of reasons or facts. The appeal to the masses asserts that a claim is true because a lot of people believe it. The appeal to nature argues that something is good or better or safer because it's perceived to be natural. The appeal to tradition argues that something's good or true because it's been around for a long time. The false choice presents only two options when there's likely many more options. The hasty generalization draws a broad conclusion based on a small sample size. The mistaken correlation for causation assumes that because events occurred together, there must be a causal connection. The red herring attempts to mislead or distract by referencing irrelevant information. The single cause oversimplifies a complex issue to a single cause. And the straw man misrepresents someone's argument to make it easier to dismiss. I promise that was the short version. For example, GMO foods are unhealthy because they aren't natural. The conclusion is GMO foods are unhealthy. And the stated premise is they aren't natural. This argument has a hidden premise. Things that aren't natural are unhealthy, which commits the appeal to nature fallacy. We can't assume that something is healthy or unhealthy based on its presumed naturalness. I mean, arsenic and botulinum are natural, but neither is good for us. By explicitly stating the hidden premise and recognizing the flaw in reasoning, we can see that we should reject this argument. The rule of objectivity. The evidence for a claim must be evaluated honestly and without self-deception. Richard Feynman famously said, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. Actually, a major reason the process of science is so effective is that it recognizes and corrects for our individual biases and limitations. There are many ways that we fool ourselves, but three of the most common thinking errors are motivated reasoning, the emotionally biased search for justifications that support what we want to be true, confirmation bias, the tendency to search for, favor, and remember information that confirms our beliefs, and the overconfidence effect. This is the tendency to overestimate our knowledge or our abilities. The rule of objectivity is probably the most challenging rule of all of them, because the human brain's capacity to reason is matched only by its ability to deceive itself. Our beliefs are important to us. They can even become part of our identity. So when we're faced with evidence that threatens a deeply held belief, we engage in motivated reasoning and confirmation bias to search for evidence that supports the conclusion that we want to believe and find ways to dismiss evidence that doesn't. And if you're looking for evidence that you're right, you will find it. You'll be wrong, but you'll be confident that you're right. The poster children for violating the rule of objectivity are pseudoscience and science denial, both of which start from a desired conclusion and work backwards, cherry-picking evidence to support the belief while ignoring or discounting evidence that doesn't. Pseudoscience and science denial are like two sides of the same coin, but they do have important differences. Pseudoscience pretends to be scientific, but doesn't adhere to science's methodology. Pseudoscience is motivated by a desire to believe, and so the standard of evidence is very low. Science denial is the refusal to accept well-established science. Denial is motivated by the desire to not believe a scientific conclusion, and so the standard of evidence is set impossibly high. The rule of objectivity essentially reminds us to pay attention to the biases, emotions, identity needs, values, and worldviews that might be driving our reasoning. When our beliefs are tied to our identity or our tribe, we defend those beliefs to protect our ego and our team. If the thought of being wrong triggers you or makes you feel defensive, you might not be able to be honest about the belief. It's difficult to do, but try to separate your identity from your belief. You are not your beliefs, 
And don't play on a team. Be the referee. The rule of alternative explanations. This rule requires us to consider other ways of explaining an observation. Often we arrive at an explanation without conscious thought, but by jumping to conclusions based on our emotions, assumptions, and existing beliefs, that initial explanation can be difficult to dislodge. But if the goal is to know the real explanation, then we need to remember that we might be wrong and consider alternative explanations. Start by brainstorming. How many other explanations can you think of? What else could be the cause? Could there be more than one cause? Could it be a coincidence? Next, use Occam's razor to determine which of the explanations is the most likely. Occam's razor states that the explanation that requires the fewest new assumptions has the highest probability of being the right one. For example, one morning you wake up and find a broken glass on the floor. How did it get there? Brainstorm explanations. Maybe it was a burglar. Maybe it was a ghost. Maybe it was the cat. Test the explanations by looking for evidence. Okay, are there other signs that somebody was in your house? Like maybe a broken window or missing items? If not, the burglar explanation seems unlikely. The ghost explanation requires a massive new assumption for which we currently don't have proof. The existence of spirits. So while it is possible that a specter was in your house during the night and knocked over a glass, it seems even less likely than the burglar explanation because it requires an additional unproven assumption for which there is no extraordinary evidence. On the other hand, you have seen your cat push objects off tables and counters. Now, you don't have definitive proof that the glass on the floor was the cat, but it was probably the cat. The rule of tentative conclusions. A popular misconception about science is that it proves things true. But scientific conclusions are always tentative and open to change with new evidence. Each study is a piece of a larger picture that becomes more clear as we put the pieces together. But because there's always more to learn and more pieces of the puzzle yet to be discovered, science doesn't provide absolute certainty. Instead, uncertainty is reduced as evidence accumulates. There's always a chance we're wrong, so we have to leave ourselves open to changing our minds with new evidence. That said, not all scientific conclusions are equally tentative. Explanations that are supported by a vast amount of evidence are called scientific theories. Because the evidence for many theories is so overwhelming and from many different independent lines of research, they're very unlikely to be overturned, although they might be modified to account for new evidence. Importantly, this doesn't mean that scientific knowledge is untrustworthy. Quite the opposite. Scientists have the humility to recognize that they could be wrong and are open to changing their minds with evidence. If scientific ideas were set in stone, knowledge wouldn't progress. Part of critical thinking is learning to be comfortable with ambiguity and uncertainty. Evidence matters, and the more and better our evidence, the more justified we are in accepting a claim. But knowledge isn't black or white. It's a spectrum with lots of shades of gray. And since we can never reach 100% certainty, we should avoid overconfidence. Our goal is to proportionally accept claims based on the available evidence and be open to revising our beliefs as new information emerges. The rule of evidence. The evidence for a claim must be reliable, comprehensive, and sufficient. Evidence gives us reasons to accept a claim or not. So it's important to evaluate the quality of evidence. First, the evidence must be reliable. Not all evidence is created equal. To determine if the evidence is reliable, we need to consider how the evidence was collected. Scientific studies are more reliable than anecdotes, but even some studies are more reliable than others. Was it an observational study, a double-blinded randomized control trial, a meta-analysis, and the source of the information? In general, the most reliable sources of scientific information are peer-reviewed journals. Reputable science organizations and government institutions are also quite reliable. Be skeptical of websites or YouTube channels that are known to publish low-quality information, and be very wary of unsourced material on social media. The evidence must be comprehensive. Imagine the evidence for a claim is like a puzzle where each piece represents a piece of evidence. If we stand back and look at the whole puzzle, 
or the body of evidence, we can see how the pieces fit together and the larger picture they create. You could, either accidentally or purposefully, cherry pick any individual piece of the puzzle and miss the bigger picture. For example, everything that's alive needs liquid water. Water is so essential to life that when we're looking for life outside of Earth, we look for evidence of liquid water. But what if we told you that all serial killers have admitted to drinking water? Or that water is the primary ingredient in many toxic pesticides? Or that drinking too much water can lead to death? By selectively choosing these pieces of the puzzle, we're left with a distorted and inaccurate view of water's importance for life. To better understand the true nature of reality, we have to look at all of the evidence, including especially evidence that doesn't support a claim. And then finally, the evidence must be sufficient. Claims made without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. And in general, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Basically, the more unusual the claim, the more evidence that's required to accept it. Claims based on authority are never sufficient. Expertise matters, of course, but experts should provide evidence. Because I said so is never enough. And anecdotes are never sufficient. Personal stories can be powerful, but they can also be unreliable. People can misperceive their experiences. And unfortunately, they can also lie. For example, let's say you own a company and Jamie works for you. because She's an excellent employee. She's always on time and does great work. One day, Jamie's late for work. If Jamie tells you her car broke down, most likely you're going to believe her. You have no reason not to. If you're really strict, though, you may ask for a receipt from the tow truck driver or the mechanic. But what if Jamie tells you that she's late because she was abducted by aliens? Now, I don't know about you, but my standard of evidence just shot through the roof. That's an extraordinary claim, and she bears the burden of proof. The Rule of Replicability Evidence for a claim should be able to be repeated no matter who's doing the research or what methodology they use. If a claim can't be replicated by independent researchers, it should be viewed with skepticism. The goal of science is to understand nature, and nature is consistent. Therefore, experimental results should be too. But it's also true that science is a human endeavor, and humans are imperfect. This can lead to error or even fraud. The rule of replicability is key to the self-correcting nature of science. We can have greater confidence in results that are replicated independently with multiple studies. And we can be the most confident in conclusions that are supported by multiple independent lines of evidence, especially those that come from different fields of science. For example, because evidence for the theory of evolution comes from many diverse lines, including DNA and protein similarities, biogeography, anatomical similarities, shared developmental pathways, vestigial structures, imperfect adaptations, fossils, and so on. Scientists have greater confidence in accepting that all living things share a common ancestor. The point is, the more studies we have that point to the same conclusion, and studies from different lines that point to the same conclusion, we can have greater confidence in that conclusion. And that's the toolkit. Critical thinking is hard work and no one can do it for us. The Flutter Toolkit will take practice, but learning these seven rules can help you stay afloat in a sea of misinformation.